hello friends we are back with the video and this time we are i am thinking of uh, making a series and this is all you wanted to know about and uh, this is episode 1 where uh, i will talk on 10 topics which i feel are important the first topic i want to cover is baba saheb ambedkar so 14th april is uh, baba saheb ambedkar jayanti and we will see some points which can be helpful for prelims uh, and mains of regarding Ambedkar. So the first thing is that uh, he started his first organization known as the Bhaiskrit Hitakarni Sabha in 1924. He was the one who visited all the three round table conferences and uh, he represented the depressed class along with Rao Bahadur Srinivasan. He formed the Independent Labour Party in 1936 and uh, which participated in the provincial elections of Bombay and had won 13 seats out of the 15 seats reserved for the scheduled caste. And uh, the Independent Labour Party was transfer transformed by Ambedkar as the All India Scheduled Caste Federation in 1942. So this party uh, participated in the general elections of 1946 but was completely defeated. Next point was that Ambedkar was opposed to strike by the civil servants and for him strike is nothing more than a breach of contract of service. It is only a civil wrong, not a crime. Uh, in July 1942, Ambedkar was appointed as the member of the Executive Council of the Viceroy as the Labour member, but he resigned from this post in May 1946. In 1920, Ambedkar started a weekly paper called as Mukanayak that's called the leader of the bomb dump to champion the cause of the depressed class. So all these points are like they can come for prelims and uh, you need to be prepared for it. Uh, some of his famous books include The Untouchable, Who Are They and Why They Have Become Untouchables, then Buddha and His Dhamma, The Rise and Fall of Hindu Women, Emancipation of Untouchables, the evolution of provincial finance in British India, Pakistan or partition of India, thoughts on linguistic states. He was the first law minister of independent India, but he resigned from this cabinet on September 1951 due to his differences with Nehru on the Hindu code bill. So that's uh, how it is like he wanted a strict uh, Hindu code bill, but uh, there were differences of opinion in the parliament and uh, but later on uh, the Hindu code bill came with uh, four uh, legislations uh, however uh, Ambedkar was the first uh, elected to constituent assembly from Bengal but he lost his seat after participation so that was basically from Bangladesh uh, however he was chosen by Bombay Congress Legislative Party in place of M.R. Jaikar who resigned earlier it should be noted that he was defeated earlier in the elections of the Constituent Assembly in Bombay. So, it is interesting to know that uh, in his interview with the Cabinet Mission on April 5, 1946, Ambedkar opposed the idea of Constituent Assembly as he feared it would be dominated by the high caste Hindus. But uh, as we know that uh, later on he became the chairman of the drafting committee of the Constituent Assembly and in fact he is called the father of the Indian Constitution. Uh, well, uh, K. V. Rao was the one whose opinion was that Ambedkar was not the father but the mother of Indian constitution. As the vital dis decisions about the constitution were taken by Nehru and Patel and Ambedkar followed the same. So that's the difference of opinion and Ambedkar was defeated in the election to the Lok Sabha in 1952 mainly due to his advocacy of partition of Kashmir. However, he was elected as a member of Rajya Sabha from Maharashtra in March 1952. In uh, 1954, he again contested the by-elections but was defeated again. He realized that a party which has no base in rural areas has no future. Ambedkar is considered as uh, the right to considered right to constitutional assembly as the soul of the constitution and union of India as an indestructible union of destructible states. So, Union of India is an indestructible union of destructible states. So, we know, right, we can make uh, states, we can change their names, we can divide states, we can merge states. So, that's the constitutional provision we have. 
and uh, ambedkar converted to buddhism on october 14 1956 along with its thousands of followers and uh, this is basically uh, the diksha bhumi in nagpur where this happened he died in delhi in 1956 due to severe diabetic neurosis after his death his political party scheduled caste federation was renamed as republican party of india rpi in 1957 by his followers so this was the first topic we discussed uh, under our new series about ambedkar now we will move towards the second topic and that is masala bonds so what are these masala bonds masala bonds are rupee do- dem- denominated overseas bond and basically what is uh, notable about is that these bonds are rupee denominated and when a company issues it uh, it is uh, deno- it is in terms of rupees so it is fayda kya hai iska ki it is shielded against the risk of currency exchange rate aberrations to dollar kaise girta hai chadta hai to it's like uh, you have more trust in the rupee currency so the foreign exchange risk is averted and the key advantages of masala bonds uh, are firstly they help to internationalize our indian rupee and deepen the indian financial system then they diversify the funding resources of indian companies to rupees mein paisa aa sakta hai to diversification of funding then thirdly uh, they may help to bring down the cost of borrowing and cost of capital yes fourthly allowing masala bonds is considered to be a small step towards full convertibility of rupee so we know right now we have a partial convertibility of rupee and uh, to remember is that there were two committees on convertibility of rupee and uh, tarapur committee one and tarapur committee two and uh, some y- one year back uh, we had heard that the rbi governor raguram rajan saying that uh, yeah, we should uh, think over uh, having full convertibility of rupee but then uh, there are various issues involved in it that uh, firstly our fiscal deficit should be controlled our cad should be control that's the current account deficit and then our rupee must be strengthened in the international market so once all these conditions are fulfilled we must go for full convertibility and uh, as we have seen that uh, if we go directly to convertibility then uh, there has been an asian crisis the asian tiger crisis so india may also face that crisis so we should take a major step uh, coming back to the topic uh, this masala bonds would support towards stability of the rupee yes and the first masala bond was issued by the international finance corporation ifc ifc is a branch of uh, world bank and uh, this masala bond was uh, issued in 2013 so far no indian uh, company has released such bonds and the analogous uh, bonds of china are called uh, dim sum while those of japan are called as samurai bonds okay and the indian companies are allowed to raise a maximum of dollar 750 million per year through masala bonds with a minimum maturity of 5 years okay now we will move towards the third topic and that's project saksham so what is this project saksham it's a new indirect tax network uh, which uh, aims at system integration at of the cbec that is the central board of excise and customs so it's basically to bolster the it network for the new gst regime uh, which is going to be rolled out uh, and uh, the project saksham will help in uh, integration of cbc it systems with the goods and services tax network Ex- uh, well uh, it will also help in the extension of the indian customs uh, service which is swift that is a single window interference interface for facilitating trade so and uh, it will also help in other tax uh, tax payer friendly initiatives under digital india and ease of doing business of cbc so the background is that uh, gst will increase the tax payers net and uh, currently it has been uh, 36 lakhs and it may increase to 65 lakh and uh, with this integration of uh, the project saksham uh, registration payment and returns data will all be sent to the gst and network and uh, it will act as a front end for other modules like audit appeal and investigation 
सो बेसिकली आई टी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर से रिलेटेड है प्रोजेक्ट सक्षम दे कैन जस्ट आस्क लाइक प्रोजेक्ट सक्षम क्या है एंड दे विल गिव फोर ऑप्शन सो यू मस्ट बी नोइंग इट राइट एंड नाउ विल मूव टूवर्ड्स द फोर्थ टॉपिक दैट इज प्रोजेक्ट इन साइट सो वॉट इज दिस प्रोजेक्ट इन साइट प्रोजेक्ट इन साइट इज बेसिकली एन इनिशियटिव ऑफ द इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट एंड विच इज गोइंग टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम मे टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन एंड इट्स टू मॉनिटर हाई वैल्यू ट्रांजेक्शन विद व्यू टू कर द सर्कुलेशन ऑफ ब्लैक मनी सो प्रोजेक्ट सक्षम वॉज रिलेटेड टू जी एस टी नेटवर्क एंड प्रोजेक्ट इन साइड इज रिलेटेड टू इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट एंड सर्कुलेशन ऑफ ब्लैक मनी एंड सो बेसिकली क्या होने वाला है इसमें कि डेटा माइनिंग होगा कलेक्शन होगा कलोशन होगा कोलेशन होगा एंड प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ सब इन सम इन्फॉर्मेशन सो इट विल हेल्प इन इफेक्टिव रिस्क मैनेजमेंट एंड विल हेल्प इन वाइडनिंग एंड डिपेंडिंग द टैक्स बेस सो द की फैक्ट्स आर दैट इट इज एन इंटीग्रेटेड प्लेटफॉर्म एंड इट मूव अवे फ्रॉम द ट्रेडिशनल मेथड ऑफ रीड्स रादर इट विल यूज सोशल मीडिया and through data mining big analytics uh, and big data what they will do is they will have an uh, eye over our social media platforms like facebook twitter and instagram and uh, they will see ki suppose tomorrow if you uh, show you are you are uh, having a car you are having a bungalow but uh, it it might be a benami thing so they will uh, have a tap on all these things so that is the thing and uh, pan will be a unique identifier uh, which will be used and uh, nextly this project insight will enhance the department's ability to monitor the flow of funds and it will provide an audit trail of high value transactions and curb circulation of black money so it's going to be implemented in the phased manner and uh, Uh, from 2016 to 18, and uh, for its implementation, it has signed a contract with LNT Infotech Limited, and it will be leveraged for the implementation of FATCA. Now, what is FATCA? FATCA is a canon of America, and uh, it wants India to be a part of it. So there are talks going on. So FATCA is basically a foreign account uh, tax compliance act intergovernmental agreement. So basically, it's about sharing data. regarding all that uh, banking money and all that between the two countries between the two bank banks etc and what's the significance of project insight is that it will help in catching tax evaders and it will be an integrated platform which will use data mining and uh, it will uh, have a reporting compliance management system which will ensure third party reporting by entities like banks and other financial institutions in timely and accurate manner and uh, it will also set up a streamlined data exchange mechanism for other governmental departments the fifth topic which we are going to move towards uh, is the titanium project so titanium karke ek uh, metal ya kuch element hai and uh, we were not yet producing it so it's the first uh, titanium project is going to be started in the ganjam district of orissa odisha the project is being established by saraf group and is the first of the kind pro titanium project and the only one in the country and uh, what we see is that uh, with this project uh, 36000 tons of titanium slag and 20000 tons of pig iron will be produced per year and uh, it's a kind of uh, titanium is a rare earth metal so rare earth metal naam se hi hai ki they are very rare and they are very precious and so uh, they are very costly and we have to import it so we uh, kind of uh, it will help uh, to cut our import bills and uh, make us uh, saksham uh, self reliant and uh, earlier uh, it was only being used by the isro and uh, it was a titanium sponge plant which was in chawra in kerala so but now commercially we, uh, we will have this thing titanium project now we'll move towards the sixth topic which is the fast tag so what is this fast tag actually you know it but the word fast tag is important because in uh, prelims they will say fast tag and uh, you will have no idea that what is fast tag so fast tag is this so that uh, now etc introduce kiya gaya hai uh, electronic toll toll counters to gaadi pe rfid rehti hai 
so it's on the uh, front of the your uh, catch of gadi that uh, there is a uh, tag and uh, your money is uh, automatically deducted when you pass through this toll naka so fast tag is basically that and it has been uh, installed in many toll nakas in the delhi mumbai delhi corridor and the golden quadrilateral and uh, basically fast tags will help in uh, removing the logistic inefficiencies so the time the fuel bills uh, which are amounts to rupees 60000 crores so that is the amount which will be saved due to this fast tag and uh, how it works like there will be an rfid tag so rfid is a radio frequency identification device uh, on these uh, windows of the vehicles and uh, it they will be prepaid and uh, it will be on the windshield of the window so Wait. there will be a uh, be readers fitted at the dedicated etc lanes and uh, when the vehicle passes the money is uh, deducted and uh, the prepaid accounts will be created at the central clearing house set up by the banks and their franchises or agents at the point of sales near the toll plazas so as examples so foreign countries may be here like we have the easy pass and the sun pass in us e pass in in australia and salik in dubai now we move towards the seventh topic that is three netra three netra means three eyes सो इंडियन रेलवेज ने इनिशिएट किया है ये थ्री नेत्रा एंड इट स्टैंड फॉर टेरेन इमेजिंग फॉर डीजल ड्राइवर्स इंफ्रा रेड एनहांस्ड ऑप्टिकल एंड रडार एसिस्टेड सिस्टम थ्री नेत्रा सो दिस इज बेसिकली टू अवॉइड ट्रेन एक्सीडेंट एंड इट इज बीन इंस्टॉल्ड ऑन द लोकोमोटिव फॉर एनहांसिंग द विजन ऑफ द लोकोमोटिव पायलट इन इनक्लीमेंट वेदर मतलब फॉग रेन होगा तो ये सिस्टम बहुत कारगर साबित होता है सो वी कैन स्टॉप द वेरियस एक्सीडेंट्स विच आर हैपनिंग ड्यू टू दिस क्लाइमेटिक फैक्टर्स एंड द की फीचर्स ऑफ थ्री नेत्रा दैट इट यूजेस इंफ्रारेड एंड रडार टेक्नोलॉजी टू कलेक्ट सिग्नल्स अप टू 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 थ्री किलोमीटर्स ऑफ डिस्टेंस एंड डिस्प्लेस द इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑन अ स्क्रीन फिटेड इन साइड द लोकोमोटिव सो इट विल अलर्ट द ड्राइवर्स ऑफ एनी फिजिकल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन on railway tracks ahead and thus give ample time for the driver to apply the brakes to prevent the train accidents and uh, it will be used uh, useful during fog uh, heavy rains and nights when uh, drivers have to constantly look outside the locomotive to judge the condition so basically three netra means three components are there the first component is infrared video camera then a high resolution optical video camera and a radar based terrain mapping system so the background is that uh, it has been used uh, in uh, air trafficking so this has been brought to the railways too and uh, uh, basically in fighter aircrafts may it is used so the clouds may say jab air aeroplane guzarti hai fighter pil so they have to look at the various obstacles so even it's being used in naval ships in mapping the ocean floor and navigating in the night so this was basically about three netra and now we move towards the eighth topic that is the fame india scheme ab a fame india scheme kya hai ke fame india matlab uh, faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles in india so this is a scheme under the national mission uh, electric mobility mission plan so the government aims at a target of uh, producing 6 to 7 million hybrid and electric vehicles uh, sale by 2020 so hybrid means uh, petrol diesel pe bhi chalegi aur electric pe bhi chalegi ya cng pe bhi chalegi so kind of uh, it's a uh, hybrid so once the charge is uh, over you can switch on to fuel and uh, there is a there is a prediction that uh, this will reduce 2 million tons uh, in terms of greenhouse gases emissions and uh, it will create 65000 direct and 3 lakh indirect jobs so it was launched in 2015 juna hai lekin uh, you know upsc asks so it was launched uh, then and uh, it stands for a uh, faster uh, adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles and the scheme was launched under the national mission so objective is uh, to support uh, hybrid and electric vehicles market 
right now it is very less and uh, there are some cars like mahindra had uh, e reva i think and so uh, there is a huge potential and india needs to move towards it basically the issue is that we need to have point of charging uh, points uh, at various uh, parts so that these are very less so unless that is not there why will people buy electric cars okay so government uh, must be working on this and uh, that is how it is and uh, implementation is there are being phases so it's a two year period from financial year 15 16 and 16 17 and uh, basically four focus areas is project sankalp so there is a वैसे तो संकल्प नाम से और भी बहुत कुछ चीजें होगी जैसे अभी बजट में भी संकल्प का कुछ था कि वो स्किल इंडिया से रिलेटेड था और 2008 में एच आई अवेयरनेस के लिए एक संकल्प करके था बट देन डिपेंड्स ऑन द ऑप्शन विच आर गिवन वॉट विल बी राइट इट वॉन्ट ओवरलैप फॉर यू पी एस सी विल टेक केयर ऑफ दैट बट रिमेंबर प्रोजेक्ट संकल्प इज दिस and uh, the now we'll move towards the tech topic that is anikantavad uh, anikantavad kya hai is a kind of anikantavad means non absolutism so it's like uh, it's a basic principle of jainism and it uh, encourages acceptance of relativism and pluralism so it's a doctrine or phir uh, पूछ लिया यूपीएससी mein anikantavad kiska hai to char option denge jainism sikhism buddhism and hinduism so you should take jainism and uh, according to this doctrine truth and reality are pursued differently from different points of view and no single point of view is completely truth to ek cheez ke hai na bahut sare truth ho sakte hai so hamara nazariya kya hai hamara view point of view kya hai wo hai jaise aap samne aap elephant ko dekh rahe hai so these are blind men who are uh, touching the elephant and uh, the one who is uh, touching the trunk what he feels that it's a pillar uh, the one who is touching the body feels that it is something else the one who is uh, touching the tail uh, feels that it is something else so it's a kind of anikantavad so it's non absolutism and uh, anikantavad is uh, against uh, ekant that is one sidedness and uh, the maxim the previous uh, picture we see the maxim of the blind man and the elephant is seen in this so thank you very much please like comment and share the video